Good evening and welcome to the Aces ROG Dream League live here from the DreamHack Monster Energy Studios and we're here for league play and that means we have two two game series for you tonight. Let's take a look at which teams we have in store for you. It is uh, going to be a double header for Empire as they will first take on basically unknown team making it out of the open or rather sorry main qualifiers number three if I'm correct and um, against Empire in game number two. We'll see Vega Squadron, the team that made it out of main qualifier number four only last Friday. And those will be our two two-game series tonight. That means we have four matches upcoming for you. And of course, with me as well in the studio, we've got Andy, Owen and Shane. How are you guys doing? Really good. Really, really good. I actually haven't seen Empire play on the new patch at all. They um, have not played yeah, on the new exactly, patch. Yeah. So, yeah. so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing a resolution maybe on Invoker or Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight. The Dragon Knight. I mean, Andy, you, oh, you were Invoker. No, but the Dragon Like, honestly. It's going to be the return of DK Lycan. Yeah. Like, hmm. snowballing is a lot better this patch because there's less rubber banding. The experience is like. Experience is okay, but the gold is a big thing too because when you buy back now after trying to defend like high ground push, you have an opportunity to get almost nothing even if you kill their entire team. True. So that's pretty awful. But makes pushing good again. Yeah. Yeah, there was a period where Empire would literally pick Dragon Knight nearly every single game and just yeah. stomp. It was a shame. No like invoker. twenty minute games most of the time when they did that. You know, I want to see resolution invoker. You know how how Shane described uh, Black's invoker as like the passive invoker, where he was like getting a Necronomicon farming. Resolution is the active invoker. He's all over the place. He he will make things happen. Is he really though? Uh, he, yes. he got Necro book as well though. Yeah, but he was way more active with it. Not split pushing as much. More looking for fights. I think that's because Empire had a tendency to five man more, like just yeah, in general. Oh yeah, like that was their preferred that, that play style. Like well. Silent used to play Gyro a lot, and yeah. they would go for like these push kind of some AOE BKB buying heroes, and just like blah, just run at your buildings. Yeah. What do you guys think about on dying though? I think he's gonna be the hero. hero. Oh god, he's insane. He's the hero. He is completely insane. If if you don't have gyrocopter or like. Medusa, is there even any heroes that can counter the tombstone early game? Like, sure, you can focus it down. Mm. But if you're in, like, a bad... Tidebringer doesn't hit it anymore either, does it? No. Nope. Oh, my God. So. What about Quills? Nope. No. Oh, God. It's it's actually unstoppable. Yeah. Tombstone, pretty good ability. Yeah. Yeah. Owen, lovely hair. Thank today. you. Yeah, once again, I let Shane do it. No, no I think, on, I think he's getting better. No, he's look got, bad, he actually. is getting better. Look, he's look, getting look, better. Well, like, I've only had, like, three tries of doing hair in, like, ten I years. Mean, you, you see that hair thing, though? Like, what? there's one falling down. Fix that, will you? No, it's okay. Oh, they can't oh, all yeah. conform. you got to have, like, a couple of strays. I right? actually put so much wax no, that's in not going up. That's Yeah, you can tell nah. from here, but I don't know if you can see it in the okay. camera. It just looks like it's wet. Because it, it was. <laughs> yeah, that's no, perfect. That's, that's, that's perfect. That's, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, you screwed <laughs> that up, Shane. <laughs> Didn't I'm going to keep that. I'm He's living that. vicariously through you, Owen. Yeah. I see. So this so is how Shane maybe would do his even hair. You know what I do, us. actually? I, I look at back uh. at the show, and then I Photoshop your hair on my head. And then you sit there. And I cry. <laughs> <laughs> you know why he's always up so late? <laughs> I'm literally in, in tears. Just, just what he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. But how yeah. are you doing? I'm good. I'm looking forward to this week. It's going to be a very kind of different feeling to the weeks we've had so far in Dream League. You know, pretty much yeah. uh, for the last four weeks, we've been like, oh, it'll be interesting to see how these guys do against the underdogs. Oh, it'll be nice for the underdogs to win. And and it's been pretty much that flat for kind of through the weeks. It's just been great, and people have hopefully been loving it. But now we're going to see a next level of play. You know, we're getting the big boys in. You're getting your Empire, your Na'Vi. You've, uh, who else are we getting? Alliance. 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 That's it. It's just yeah. They're yeah. the four big boys we're inviting. And, and of course, we've had some pretty decent teams that have come through the qualifiers. You know, your Aces Polar, your Bird and United, you're basically unknown. And of course, Vega Squadron mm. uh, last week. So it'll be really interesting to see how they all match up because as good as the teams are that we've invited to this stage, I wouldn't say they're a ridiculous amount better than the teams that are qualified, at least not for all of them. I think there's a real mixed bunch. And in that sense, I feel we're going to have a very even kind of league play across the board. So I think we're going to have a lot of very hard to predict matchups. It's kind of different as well because like beforehand, we'd... We, we didn't really have any history on any of the teams. They were all kind of new faces to us, yep. and we were kind of trying to learn about their play as we were talking about it. But now we have all these teams like, for example, Empire today. Like, we're, you know all the players. You've seen them play probably hundreds of times. Yeah. But not yet yeah. on this patch. I, yeah. They, no, yeah, but that's no. the thing. Like, that's the biggest point, right? It's like, no matter if you're, like, a Tier 1 team might be able to adapt a little bit better than maybe, like, a Tier 2 or Tier 3 team. But uh, most of the people that are on the teams that qualified through the main qualifiers also are tier one players on yeah. those teams. So the ability to adapt is going to be the biggest thing, I think, about the league play in general. Like, who finds what strategy works the best? 
and who can uh, do it the best. Yeah, and we are indeed in a, in a new phase, basically, of the tournament, so we can take a closer look at how that actually works, because uh, we're going to have eight teams. We already mentioned uh, the four invited teams, the four um, teams that came through the main qualifier, and they together make for the league. And so this is what it is right now, because nobody has played a single game yet, and you see like a big red line. If you're under that line, Oh, well, Empire needs to step their game up. Yeah, they do. Because <laughs> if, if you're on that line, you're not going to DreamHack Summer. Only the top six moves to DreamHack Summer. And that's what League Play is all about. Make does, it to the top six. Does first, second, third, fourth make any difference? First, second will get a step further into the main event. Okay, so they maybe don't play the first day or something like that? Uh, yeah, basically it's uh, it's going to be... You, you can see it as like two double elim elimination brackets. Okay. And then um, the, the three to six teams in the League Play will then play in the first double elimination bracket and two teams of that remain and they will be entering a double elimination bracket with the top two of league play. Mm. So almost uh, like a lot of rankings matter. Maybe in between three and, and six it doesn't matter as much, but you, you need to be getting to the top six and you know you want to be getting to top two. Like there's definitely something to fight for there. Okay. It's going to be interesting to see. And of course uh, today, as said, Empire twice. Basically unknown Vega Squadron. Which one are we looking forward to most? I think Vega Squadron, after they played last week, definitely have uh, the upper hand over... Uh, like, in in relation to the games, they have the biggest advantage going in. Like, I'd prefer them to beat Empire rather than basically unknown. I kind of said that in a roundabout way, but... Yeah, you did. <laughs> but yeah. I, I think everybody knew what you were saying, so yeah. it's fine. Right. And I actually agree. I think that uh, Vega are going to be the ones who probably have a... maybe a more experienced roster in the, the Tier 1 team sense, but... Who knows? I mean, basically, Unknown have continued to perform at a pretty solid level. I don't think they've had any games where I felt like they lost just due to like terrible decision making or anything like that. So they are a little bit stable, but I don't know. It's it's just hard to think that they would beat Empire. You know? Do you if you're Empire and you know like basically Unknown, do you ban Magnus? Like is, like we've said this so much throughout. Yeah, our, you should. Our, yeah. Just I to think take even away the... even as a tier one team, you should take the enemy team out of their comfort zone. Like, don't give them what they're good at. Yeah. It's in Dota if you underestimate your opponent, it only takes like one or two times to learn your lesson. And I think even other teams throughout the main qualifier learn that. It's like one game you let Magnus through, basically I know and walk all over you. And it's not even about the mag itself. I mean that's what makes the hero a ban worthy thing yeah. in my opinion. It's the style that you play. It's not necessarily about the RP, it's my carry has like three hundred CS at twenty five minutes every game, no matter what you yeah, do. Especially in league play where like every game matters in itself. It's not so much like you have to win the best of three, it's like you can't take chances in each game. Yeah. You need, to, you need to have consistency. Yeah, and for Empire, I mean, they're playing four games in the same day. Do you feel like maybe Vega Squadron... I, like, you can see it two ways, right? Either they're going to be tired for the fourth game, or, like, they, like we said, this is their first time playing on the patch, at least in official capacity. Maybe they have uh, figured out their golden hero that they want to pick all the time. Uh, they're Dota players, Shiver. Four like, games when is four you games out. Oh, come Dota. on. No way. Not even close. This no. team has played at Starlighter. I know. Right? <laughs> they play like 20 hour days, so I'm pretty sure they'll be fine. Who knows, maybe they scrimmed from 8 a.m. this morning. You don't know that. I only got like three and a half hours of sleep and I'm here. So I'm pretty sure they'll be fine. I'm old. If I can get away with doing that, Ooh, they can play Dota. Talking about that, pre-pwned is in Oxford Dictionary. I, I didn't know how yeah. I made that link. How did that trans? <laughs> how does me being old transition old into that? Oxford? Is that, is that where it <laughs> no. came from? No, it came from, uh, it's only been in Oxford Dictionary since 1970s. So uh, like a few weeks ago, Shiva said pre pwned We all thought she was insane. It's and a word. It's in a dictionary. It's Indian English. It's Indian English, but it's English Indian non nonetheless. Indian English, Andy. Not even a thing. I don't know enough about Indian English to dispute it. No, I'm not Indian. I'm it's not an a, expert it's on a it. a word. Wait, aren't you like pre so Indian? Yeah, like 116th or something. But well, you're American, so you're American people say that if you're 116th. You're we're, we're like a mutt, you know? We're like yeah. a bunch of different things. It's not, not clear. Oh, what are you looking forward to most today? I don't, I've, as, as a lot of us are looking forward to, just seeing how teams adapt to the, obviously the, the recent pack 6.84. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting, as we were saying, between Vega and Empire in the sense that yeah. Vega, at least from what we've seen in Dream League, uh, they've adapted to the patch very nicely. We see the nine Pashi Pashi Gyrocopter, we see Mag on the Beastmaster, and of course we also see no one um, playing the Dragon Knight very well. And they, uh, they've three had games very in a row, was it. that? Yeah. Uh, Primo, yeah. I think they did drop... Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I think... It, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, they dropped one, but he played it in all he three He played years. Dragon Knight in all three. And, and Dragon Knight is definitely one of those heroes that I think we are going to see a lot more in this patch now because it just really fits the whole kind of feel of the patch in the sense that the hero's stronger, of course, but also in the sense that now we're in a 
we're in a stage when the early game really matters. And if you have a DK, chances are you're going to do pretty well in your lane, and chances are you're going to be able to do a lot of heavy tower damage as soon as you've hit six, and you're able to start pushing, which is also going to be um, possible in the sense that mid heroes that also roam a lot are going to be popular, like your Queen of Pains, as it was before, but in the sense that hero kills, there's, they're going to be more higher priority in the early yeah. game than your farming sense. So the, the, the lane's going to be free for the Dragon Knight, he's going to be able to get the push on. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing no one on the Dragon Knight today if he manages to get it through the draft. Yeah, I actually was quite surprised to read that um, um, Queen of Pain, nothing changed of Queen of Pain, and she is the only hero that is 100% pick and ban rate in all the games of uh, 6.84 so Well, they did so buff far. her significantly. Like, it, it was like two patches ago, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two yeah, or okay. three patches ago. Yeah. But the, the dagger range thing was huge, and so was the blink range as well. The blink range is probably the biggest one, I think. Yeah, yeah. it's insane. Yeah. You can actually... If you get like ruptured by Bloodseeker and you walk forward like a hundred units and then blink, you can mm. disjoint the rupture damage because it doesn't. It goes over the course of one second. So, she she blinks long enough. I think she's the only hero in the game who actually does go far enough to be able to stop it. So just like that distance alone is crazy. Even for a level one gank, like you rotate most of the time when you gank the first time on Queen, you only have level one blink. So being able to get into a better position for your ulti and your scream combo also makes a big difference. And on top of the fact that she's always been a fantastic laner, yeah. and with her being picked in six point eight three. This is a better snowballing patch than 6.83 was. Even though Queen got a pure damage buff to her ulti, which is why she was still picked, I feel, because her snowballing was still better in that patch. Now it's even better because she's good ganking, she's good mid game, good late game. Yeah, more heroes like that. Beastmaster, perhaps as well. Yeah. We're going to yeah. see a lot of. He's insane. Why did they buff that hero? I don't know. I mean, even before, we talked to Mag on Thursday, where, right before the patch came out, and, and they played Beastmaster. I think both games that they played that night where they 2 0 their opponent, I think. And he was talking about Beastmaster. Beastmaster is such a good hero, and he's going to get only better in the patch. Yeah. And, and I mean, he did obviously get better in the patch, and, and we see more and more teams picking him up. Do you think he's going to get first ban material? I think against some teams, you might consider it. It just depends on if they have a very good Beastmaster player. Like Hawk positioning, knowing like how to rotate. When Mag uh, and Sima completely destroyed their game, like just between the two of them, like going around finding picks after pick after pick, that was really the thing that kind of set that, them apart from a lot of other teams, like their experience yeah. with the hero. Like, he played it amazingly. Like the it's, uh, it's, it's patch, it's patch only yeah, this patch data? Only. <laughs> yeah, this patch only. Two games Beastmaster, 100% win rate. But I think it's interesting, like, dynamic-wise, to think about these melee heroes being picked up, because I think it also increases the relevance of heroes like Queen of Pain even more, as if DK is going to be picked mid a lot. You're going to be seeing either queen bans or queen picks just to counter that. You know, when Magnus used to be picked a lot, you yeah. saw queen because queen just dumps on any melee hero in lane. Yeah. And then with Beastmaster, it's going to be the same. You might even see the return of Razor again because of how much he's dominant against those melee style heroes and how good he can be during like the early five man, which people might start uh, picking a little bit more now. How about Viper? Viper could be a thing as well. Yeah. Coming back? Yeah, he could be. I, he's one of those heroes that's still kind of hard to go high ground with. That's the biggest concern with him, is you need another hero on your team who can actually help Siege. And I think that's why DK is such a solid choice most of the time, because it's like guaranteed damage. I've been watching like a lot, like trying to watch a lot of Dota over the last few days. And um, basically, it, it seems like it's so much easier to go high ground in this patch. Like, yeah, of course it is. It, it just, it, like beforehand when I was watching Dota, it's like, oh, they're pushing, but they're not really going to push. You know, they're, they're just they're like sieging sniper. Sieging a bit, seeing yeah. if someone makes a mistake. Exactly, yeah. And then... and. But nowadays it's just like okay, we can we can risk it, we can risk it, and we can go even though we might be in like a, such a secure lead. It's like okay, let's 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 give it a shot. Yeah, it yeah. makes the game more interesting yeah, because people does. are more willing to take risk, and that's good. Any hero you want to see, Owen? Particular without just you know the I, big boys. I, I do want to see Magnus. I know okay. that it's unlikely that they'll let Arise get it, but uh, it's always good fun seeing an Arise Magnus game, in, even though it does kind of feel like you can almost feel that the game's over in the sense that his win rate's ridiculous. I think it was something like 88% on the Magnus arises, um, at least in 6.83. Um, but it's, yeah, it's always good fun to see him on the Magnus. Yeah. In they might actually with? have a game plan for it. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe but, they, they but try to beat it. But then that, that, that seems land. to be that a lot of teams feel that they've got a game plan for the Magnus. Right? They're like, well, we'll let him take Magnus. It's fine. We can sort of. And then they never. Well, yeah. It never yeah. seems well, to work. What's your game plan? Just like yeah. outlane the Magnus so hard that he... Well, a lot of people pick things like Bat 
And but, like any kind of hard to catch hero, like Slark as well. Like anything that doesn't really care about RP that much. Or you could just like hard lane dominate him with yeah. like the queen pick. So I don't but know. But it's not just about the, the Magnus. It's also about like in terms of uh, basically unknown. They normally pick like this melee core that's going to yeah. benefit but that's so also much from empower. Nico baby. You can deal yeah. with both of those things. And I think a more experienced team like Empire would probably be, be better at it than what we saw in the, the main enough. qualifiers. Because yeah. they're like... They're it, better? Saying tier two teams isn't really fair because tier two teams are still extremely good. It's just the Empire is very well established and they know like the weaknesses of a lineup inherently as they see it. And since Mask of Madness got nerfed, the Juggernaut pick is still okay, but it's not like quite as good because the farming speed is slower. Yeah, PA is amazing in this patch. That's going to be a core that I'm, I'm sure we'll be seeing a heck of a lot of due to the break mechanic not being applicable on Hex anymore and having to buy MKB. Yeah, but when you when you pick PA though, you risk the like the jewel offlane like undying, spirit breaker like Phoenix. I like... think it's a late carry pick. Yeah. Like you have to draft around the late pick when you're gonna do PA because okay. of that reason alone. And with Undying being picked so much in six point eight three towards the end, and now with him being buffed and six point eight four, yep. he's gonna be banned, I think, a lot. I think he could be first band material. Yeah, like Wisp Undying bands, stuff like that. Yeah. And they have all the the new heroes, or at least heroes with you know new gimmicky things, maybe possible. You also have a lot of new items, and I'm curious. I mean, obviously we didn't see a glimmer cape on Friday, which, mm. on hindsight, might have been a bad choice because it already got uh, nerfed a bit because it was oh, just it got really destroyed. Destroyed. like a bit from zero. I still played it. Infinity increase in mana cost. Basically. It was yeah, 130, 130 is actually is a lot. fairly steep. Yeah, but I understand why they did it. Like it, it, was, it was like they forgot the mana cost. Though. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> crap, who forgot that line of code? <laughs> <laughs> they won't notice, it'll be fine. Yeah, it, it was funny because uh, we were doing FPL casting, Owen and I, mm -hmm. and it was like one team, one game had four Glimmer four Capes, capes. <laughs> and it was just four. glimmering yeah. everywhere. Like you couldn't kill anyone, they just had oh. permanent magic resist. It and you're like, there's something wrong here if, yeah. if a team... No one just, could die. Yeah. I don't know, it was pretty, pretty insane. So which other here, uh, or rather, items are we gonna see then? Solar Crest. I've heard a lot I of think, talks yeah. about Solar that Crest one. Solar Crest is pretty, pretty likely. Uh, if people are going for push, Guardian Greaves. I think a lot of people underestimate how good they actually are. Would you buy like already as fast as you can? Like, would you actually go for that straight away? Or I think if you're running like some like kind a... of uh, Viper or Razor lineup or something like that, you're probably more likely to as get them early. The the Viper gets Guardian Greaves mid. Yeah. Or Razor. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like um, hmm. that kind of. Like tankiness for Viper fits the hero really well. Yeah. Also, if they have like damage over time abilities, like Doom, like any sort of like dots, like so when you get the low health, you literally nearly can't die. It heals yeah. you so much. Yeah, and it's like 15 armor or something like yeah. that. On yeah, top of 15 HP. Yeah, that's it's insane. Really. And it dispels. The dispel thing is like against heroes like Storm, Quap, like Orchid builders. Yeah. You know, say you're an Enigma, like you can just wait, mm. and he ha yeah. he has to wait on you. Like it's it's. Uh, Really strong auto. Yeah, there's a lot of cool things you can do this patch, so I can't wait to see what the teams try. Likewise, and I think actually it's time uh, to make some uh, predictions so that afterwards I can show you off the couch. But what do you think? I mean, obviously mm. it's not best of three, so there's no particular winner, but you can say like 1-1, one, 2-0. One, oh. Yeah, I it's, think it's harder to predict two, two game series. It is. It? I think the first series will be 2-0 oh Empire. I think the second series will be 1-1 one, one Empire. Okay. Or one, well, I guess it's not really one one Empire if it's one uh, one. Right? It's one it's one. One, each. one one, but my heart is with Empire. Okay. So one one with one game being more convincing than the second. Yes. Okay. Nice. Oh, that's that's good. I want. I want to see some kind of upsets coming from the the people going against Empire, but I I think in all honesty, Empire will take both series two zero. I would really? be surprised. Really? Both two zero. I think both will be two zero. Yeah, I think Empire is kind of in another league, but maybe I'll be surprised by Vega. <laughs> I Maybe. mean, Vega, I mean, it's also slightly a grudge match, right? I mean, Mag is up against Empire. Yeah. Mag knows Empire really well. Maybe there is this mm. game for them in there somewhere. I saw Mag that. play uh, Brood Mother on the weekend. Yeah. And it didn't go great for them. No. So, um... Wait, which game was that? It was against Four Anchors, wasn't it? Four Anchors, yeah. There was. There was I didn't watch that one. Basically, I just looked up every team and seen who played in the patch. Yeah. And they were the, the only ones that played over the weekend in the patch, and they lost 2-1. Okay. Mm. Hmm. So that was also a game that I believe that they had Winter Wyvern in. So yeah. maybe trying out something a bit different there. And it That's a hero we actually, I'm looking forward to see because against a like they increased the duration of his ulti and like that's a massive, massive yeah, ulti. But they nerfed the ulti as well. Well, a little bit, yeah. They well, nerfed I... the damage you do to your teammates. Yeah. But in, realistically, you only really want to put a lockdown. Like, 
Yeah, you, know, you, you like, should be able to work around. There's very it. few yeah. situations like where it's like, okay, we need this character to do damage to this character for us to win the fight. Like if you're in that stage of the game, you're probably already lost the game. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. And the, the disable through BKB is really yeah, important, exactly, like you yeah. mentioned. Yeah, I don't know. I think that hero is, it's like Visage in a way. Yeah. It's like really good to be like, because you're so long range. Like all of your abilities are insane yeah. long, but you're slow and you're extremely susceptible to just getting blown up. Yeah. So if you're ever out of position, you can be punished like super hard. Against like certain lineups though, like with like, if, for example, Magnus and like a physical DPS core, like a melee core. If you pick Winter Wyvern and you, uh, you know, you just use the the shield on the hero that the like it could be very strong in the right situation. Oh yeah, I'm not saying the hero's bad. I'm just saying it does have weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. it does. I can't find a segue. You, just, you to want us to leave, don't you? I yeah. want you to leave. Let's go away. Yeah. We're getting, we can go. I was trying to find a segue, but segue with weaknesses wouldn't be a nice one, so I couldn't turn that around. So. You could be like, you know what the weakness is? I want an Andy. Get you out. Get out of my like, couch. I'm going to be really cold now. <laughs> no, it is time for our weekly guest, though, so uh, stick around. And here we are, indeed, our weekly guest, Abe Mother. How are you doing? What's up? I'm good. Good to hear. How have you, what have you, what have you been up to lately? Like right now or? Just overall. In general? Yeah. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Dota and uh, like trying to find myself, you know. Could you like, uh, for people who may, might not know you, tell us a bit about yourself or where you came from, what you've done in Dota? Sure. Uh, I started off in Dota, like my Dota career was uh, Team Coast. Do you remember the bandwagon? I, I was on, okay. <laughs> I casted, um, I think it was Fragboy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we were talking to you guys in the lobby and you were all really nice. We were like, these guys, they're legends. And we were like hyping these up so much for so oh, it was brilliant. Yeah, it was good times. So it was really, really fun. It was like where it started off. We started off with Team Coast. It was me, uh, E Skills, he's in Lemon Dogs now. It was Solan, a Danish player. Uh Steph Style and Frigolith, an old uh, Swedish support combo back in the days. Um and yeah, it took off from there. We started with Team Coast. That didn't go so well. We went on to um, what's it afterwards. Uh, I, I went. I went to Alliance for a quick bit yeah. as a stand-in. You uh, replaced Jesse, right? Yeah. yeah. How did you find that? Like, did you learn a lot about it, or like about Dota and how? How to like? Did you feel like that? That made you a better player? Yeah, of course. He really did. Like yeah. the LAN experience as well alone is huge yeah. for a player. So, and I learned a lot from uh, Loda and uh, and I guess. And after that. Um, after that, shortly thereafter, I started uh, the project with uh, Hansken and the guys. We found out like the the Lion Squad, and then from there we got sponsored by NIP. Yeah, it was like glory days, and now I'm back here on the couch. <laughs> and, and and what do you do in Dota at the moment? Do you have a you have a team? Yeah, I play <laughs> with the four Swedish guys named uh, Support, Sargo, JLP, and uh, Miracle, the old school Miracle. Yep, Miracle with the hyphen at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that guy. Uh, we play on a team called Taco Life. It's a pretty good name. Yeah, it's a good life. <laughs> is, it? is that all you eat? Like, yeah. It's like the rule of the team. Yeah, yeah. we're Got sponsored a sponsor, by Taco yeah. Bell. <laughs> <laughs> like big giant trucks back up my backyard, you know? Mm. You, don't, you surely don't eat trucks full of tacos. Why or, not? Okay. Why not? What do you mean? Like, how can you eat trucks full of tacos? Like, Maybe that's he invites all his family. Don't judge. True. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do outside of Dota at the moment, uh, if anything? Not much. I've been like looking into summertime jobs and like other occupations, like university and such. So mm -hmm. not so much right now. But maybe for fall I do studies or you got a study that you would want to do if you. What's yeah, I, I want to study at some point. So I just don't one? know if well, it's well, now what's, or what's, what's what do you want to study? What topic? Uh, I'm looking into engineering, like civil engineering. Mm, cool, right. So you've been playing a lot of Dota? Yeah. Which is the hero? Which is the one? The hero. Yeah. I think there's... Right now there's four heroes. Okay, okay you can name four. But you still have to put them in ranking. Okay. Hmm. I think Beastmaster is first. I think he's super strong. Okay. Especially since after he got like... Small buffs, which he didn't need. Like Draskill said. Just tiny little buffs all the time though as well. Yeah. Like... I think Iceberg really thinks the hero is OP. He just wants people to know that yeah. how good it is. Guys, look at this <laughs> yeah, hero! <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's what he does a lot. It's like, like the tree and syndrome. Yeah. Yeah, like a lot of patches, there are things that are broken, but people don't use them. So he's like, hey guys, take this. Um, other than that, I think Undying is first pick, first ban, as they said before as well. Uh, Gyrocopter is really good now. 
Ursa. Oh yeah. That's already four. Those four, I think, are really strong right now. It's kind of when you talk about Beastmaster, it's really weird. Like beforehand, when people used to pick them, they used to just like stack camp, stack ancients with them, and then yeah. farm with the axes. Yeah. But now people use the boar like aggressively, yeah. and they like just use it in lane to harass yeah. the last hit because it's, it's so powerful. A good, like, he's a really good oh, laner. Like yeah. he has yeah. a range to that cast of uh, the boar. Yeah, and it's especially when you have two of them yeah. that do like 120 yeah. damage or whatever. It's and it's at attack slow, movement yeah. slow, everything. Is yes, it also he's got your, everything uh, basically? Yeah, true. Vision and like you through BKB disable. Yeah. Really it's, uh, it's amazing. It's always been amazing, but it's just really good now. I think. Is it also your favorite change, or what is your favorite change if it not? I think the new items are really cool. Like the Lotus Orb. How do you? I'm just trying to imagine how you're gonna use it and who's gonna build it in what scenario. Yeah. You don't really know yet, so. You can pretty like if like in a lot of scenarios, if you can time it yeah. well enough, like you can just completely turn a team by. I see it as a, like a six-second Lincoln, basically. Yeah. But it also reflects stuff, so it can. It's cheaper than a Lincoln's. You can put it on anyone. It's yeah. like. It's not always great. Is it the no? Of course not. It's not always. Is great. it the counter yeah. to Beastmaster? If you play it right. Well, if, if you get roared and he'll get roared in return. Yeah. Then, but if you would have roar, would you actually roar the Beastmaster after he already roared? <laughs> I don't think so. It'd be actually hilarious to watch the team fight <laughs> because everyone, like both teams, would just get pushed away. Yeah. And there'd yeah. be just like this massive line in the middle. But because if you want to roar someone, you don't roar a, a, a hero that already used his, his biggest his ultimate. Ulti, yeah. yeah. But then he can't. What do you mean? Well, with the load sword? Yeah. Because yeah. then he'd already. But if you just put it on preemptively for like a hero, it's like a six second BKB because you don't want to roar him. You would. Because you know you're gonna roar yourself. Yes. Maybe you do. I don't know. It's like it's weird. But that's kind of deep, yeah. isn't it? Like, do you want to roar him to, to roar yourself? Yeah. Sometimes it maybe might you be want worth to it, roar yourself so that he can't roar anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. But I mean, you still lock them down through the Lotus Orb. True. So it still does its job, it's just that you do it on yourself as yeah. well. I think uh, that Lotus Orb is especially powerful in pubs, because a lot of people don't necessarily even instantly notice that there is actually bubble around the hero. Yeah. Yeah. So they just cast spells and... Yeah, it is quite noticeable though. Like, well, after yeah, a while... In, like, it's probably in pubs, one of the if, you, if you ran into it a couple of times yourself, then maybe yeah. yet then, but... I, yeah, I you bring yourself once, you're not going to do it again, kind of yeah. scenario. Yeah, yeah but still, it's, it's an expensive item. It costs True. like 4.2k or something. Yeah. yeah, It gives no stats, only armor and damage. Like, what hero uses that efficiently? It's not a lot of heroes. In competitive, no. not a lot. Like, like the stats su itself. Super late game on support heroes, maybe. Yeah, like, that's so much money for yeah. support. And you pr probably buy Hex or... Ags or something, yeah. <sighs> I know. I'm, I'm pretty sure against certain lineups, it might, might. Yeah, be for sure, for sure. I'm just curious as to where you want to use it. Yeah. And where it's efficient. Are we gonna see it today? It's a bet. Yes or no? I don't think we're gonna see Lotus Orb. I don't think it's like late enough in the patch for people to like be completely comfortable no. with the okay. item. Are we gonna see Glimmer Cape? Maybe. Yeah. I think you need like a Bloodstone hero to carry the Glimmer Cape. Just so you have the mana. Yeah. yeah. Just spam it. Like use it. Or you always use. carry mangoes. <laughs> What's the cooldown of mangoes? I have I There's no cooldown. No cooldown. You can eat but them. But you can't stack them. They the take one time. slot each. Okay, okay. And it's like super expensive. You pay one gold for each point of mana you get. So like the efficiency is not very good. No, it's just for like them clutch situations. Basically. Yeah, on if, you can, heroes if you're like a bristleback on the offlane and you have a mango, you start chasing a support that can't get away. You're yeah. like, he has five stacks now. I'm gonna mango. Bye bye. See ya. It's like it's you have to trade one kill for a mango, I think. Yeah. At least. I think on dying is actually the mango man. As well. It's pretty good as well. Yeah. Mango man. Because you can directly <laughs> translate mana into health as well. Yeah. With the DK and sure. the heal. So I agree, totally. So we're gonna see basically unknown taking on Empire, first match. What are your thoughts? It's be it's gonna be interesting, I think for sure. It's like it's so hard to predict who's gonna win now since the patch yeah. changes and everything, it's like the wild wild west out here. So I think it's gonna be one one and like it's so hard to predict actually. Are you expecting to see the the Magnus banned out against basically unknown Arise Magnus? Mm. I don't think it's gonna be sup it's gonna be like a second phase priority. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think there's a lot more heroes that are first phase material. Because then basically unknown always like nearly first pick if they yeah, do get if it. they have the chance they, they they would I mean we haven't seen them play this patch maybe they have something entirely different in mind. Yeah. Okay. That could yeah. be. I don't know. I think it's gonna be second phase material actually. There's so many heroes you want yeah. to get earlier on sure. than Magnus, in my opinion. But you can still do good combos with it, so... I know, I, I, think, I think we'll see Undying from either team. I think, honestly, 
any sort of dual lane yeah. running down, yeah, exactly. you, you just can't win. Yeah. It just secures a lane. So good. Like, I'm dying Visage now. Visage yeah. as well hasn't been yeah, spoken of yeah, that true. much, but yeah. he doesn't really have any natural counters anymore, like the Bristleback used to do before. Yeah, Gyrocopter still. Yeah, Gyro, I guess. But it's like, he's the only hero that actually works against Tombstone and Visage and stuff like that. Yeah, Medusa. And would you oh, get Medusa. any of the new items on Undying? Oh, the new pipe is like super strong on him. Yeah. The yeah. buffed pipe is like amazing. Maybe even the guardian boots if you get a lot of farm on. If you get a lot of farm, I think it's gonna be hard from that. But if you can get it, it's super good. Yeah. But like, if if you pick on dying, will he always be like a uh, one of the cores? No, uh, I don't think. We use him as support. We used to do that at NMP yeah. back in the days. Hans can play it on dying with like a bat or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, overall, death ball is strong enough for sure. I don't think he does enough with items on dying. Like you know, like yeah. he, he does the exact same without items as he would with yeah. them. As long much. as he doesn't get blown up in fights, he's gonna. Yeah. Have a great impact without items. I agree. And you both never mentioned alchemists. Are we going to see people I've been farming thinking about alchemists, alchemists for other lots. people? A lot. I think mid alchemist could be. Could it's be a really thing. interesting the mechanic itself. Yeah, it is. Especially if you have some actually a team that actually, you know, w has alchemists upgrades that are definitely really yeah. good. Yeah, like yeah, supports that can't farm them naturally. Yeah. yeah. I agree. It's super good, but like it's like, like on dying, for example. Yeah, it could be good. Yeah, but it's like. There's so many good heroes with Agnims, but how do you actually get to that point? That's the problem I see with the hero right now. I've it seen Alchemist with like 1400 GPM. I think uh, <laughs> like if you go if you go <laughs> mid on Alchemist, yeah. and you just get your team to secure one rune, like you're yeah. all in on that rune. You have your bottle instantly, and then you rush the, the Guardian Greaves, yeah. and you just continue to farm that way. Like honestly, it's, it's an interesting way to put it, but I think also support Alchemist could be good. Just give him a bounty rune, yeah. and buy bottle instantly for your mid hero. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's then, the problem, if you give the rune away, he's going to he's gonna be a bit sacrificed in mid. And then just make sure that the, if he gets like two or three more bounty runs after that, yeah. like that's an insane amount of but gold. As, you can just, as long as you can pull your safe lane, you can always get level 2 and get your stun, and you're mm. going to be efficient with the support. True. You could, if you even wanted, you could just stack camps and, and just like... Later on, you can just uh, transition into a core. Yeah. If you're playing against an alchemist, you would put extra pressure on making sure that the bounty runes do not go to an alchemist, though. That's when you pick yeah. on dying. With the alchemist to go yeah. to, to create with the, the alchemist, yeah. you yeah, have to force the other team to actually skill a stun on alchemist yeah. for the next turn. That's kind of how to play it. I think. Okay. It's not super big if he gets the rune either, but I mean, it's, it's it's okay. True. So, what's your prediction? 1 1 in this series. 1 1. Shane? I only go 2 0 to Team Empire. Did you try to cheat? No, I didn't. I was just <laughs> like, look, just I have think you just cheated. I, d I didn't <coughs> cheat. Is that a. Uh, it is. I, I think you did. <laughs> well, uh, I, was, I said that earlier in the car as well. Yes. Yes, so I didn't yes. cheat. In a way, maybe not. Okay. So <clears> the thing yeah. you saw is uh, regarding draft. I am going to say 2-0 as well, though. I'm going to be really boring in that, okay, uh, that regards. But um, the thing that Shane saw, what's the draft? And that's where we're going, is going to be Odie Pixel and Draskel with game one of Empire taking on a basically unknown.